In this video we are going to be exploring what sparked the First World War. Our learning intention is we're going to retell the events of the trigger for World War I, so the event that started it off. Success criteria, we're going to be able to retell the event in chronological order, to retell the event in detail, and to evaluate whether Gavrilo Princip was to blame for World War I. So, a little bit of background for this event is that at the start of the 20th century there was a lot of tension between Serbia, a newly independent country, and the Empire of Austria-Hungary. Now the Austro-Hungarian Empire was a very powerful empire in Europe, however it was on the decline, so some of its colonies were trying to win its independence. Serbia was looking to take advantage of that. On the other hand, Austria was trying to bring Serbia into its empire. So they had very, very conflicting uh, opinions and beliefs of what they wanted to do. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, as you can see, was quite large in, the, in Europe. Uh, lots of different countries were in their empire. The one of which that we're going to be focusing on today is the country of Bosnia, which you should be able to see there towards the south, and the city, the capital city, Sarajevo. Right next to that part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire was the country of Serbia, which I've circled. Those are the two countries that we are going to be focusing on, so Bosnia within the Austrian Empire and Serbia. All of this event takes place on the 28th of June 1914 in the city of Sarajevo, Bosnia. That's a modern photograph of Sarajevo in Bosnia. So, what happened on that day was Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who was the heir to the throne in Austria-Hungary, so he was going to take over control, was visiting the city of Sarajevo with his wife to inspect Austrian troops, to see the Empire's troops. It was also a bit of a, a publicity campaign to try and win more support and make the Austrian people uh, more popular in the Bosnian region. So, at the same time though, there was a Serbian terrorist group known as the Black Hand, whose motives were that they wanted it, Bosnia to no longer be part of the uh, of, of the Austrian Empire, they wanted Bosnia to join up with their country, Serbia, so they could join together. They had common views and common sort of culture, so they wanted their countries to unite together. The Black Hand sent a number of would-be assassins to the city of Sarajevo on that day, two of which that we'll be looking at today are Gavrilo Princip and Njadjelko Kabrinovic. These were young men. They weren't old, they were young, early 20s, late teens. Now, the trip started without too much fuss. They arrived by the train station, uh, Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie, and they inspected the troops. They then, then began their trip from the station down to the city hall where they were due to have meetings and speeches were to be given. Now, the issue was that they had published their parade route. So their route that they were going to follow on their tour was published beforehand. Now that meant that those would-be assassins knew exactly where the Archduke's car was going to be at any given point. So that meant those assassins who had gone with the opportunity to try and kill the Archduke were lined up ready and waiting. Now the first assassin they passed choked. He, he panicked at the last minute and he didn't manage to do anything. However, the next assassin that they came across was Nadielko Kabrinovich. Now he was equipped with his explosives and he was not as nervous. He primed his explosive ready, he threw it into the road. But that explosive didn't manage to impact the Archduke's car. In fact, it exploded the car behind. As a result of this, the Archduke's car sped off down to the town hall, not very happy at all. 
So, Franz Ferdinand arrived at the town hall, quite shaken, quite angry from the event. Whilst the mayor was giving his speech, Franz Ferdinand interrupted with, I come here as your guest and you people greet me with bombs. He was not very happy, as you'd imagine. People don't like it when you have a bomb thrown at you. So, he was very angry. His wife Sophie managed to calm him down and they managed to complete their meeting and the speeches were given and then they left. Now, they decided that they weren't going to follow the original route. They decided that the original route was, would take them down two narrow roads that wouldn't be particularly safe. They would then instead follow the main road out of the city. Unfortunately, this conversation was carried out in German. The driver of the car didn't speak German. He was from the Czech Republic. So that meant that the driver didn't understand that the route had changed. So that meant that when they carried on down the Apple Key, the main row, the main road that they were traveling down, the change plan was to carry on down the road. But as the driver wasn't aware of this, he instead turned right onto Franz Joseph Strasser. Now, the Archduke and his men were not very happy that the driver had turned and they immediately shouted for the driver to stop and turn around. Difficulty being in 1914 that the Archduke car did not apparently have a reverse gear. So turning around was not a simple task. They stopped in order to try and do this reverse manoeuvre. They stopped outside this building on Franz Josef Strasse, it's a cafe. Just so happens that right by the spot that they stopped was standing this man, Gavrilo Princep. Now Gavrilo Princep couldn't believe his luck. He drew out his pistol, he walked towards the car and he shot. Two shots. Two shots that would go on to have massive, massive impact on world history. Two shots that would echo throughout Europe, throughout the world, and ultimately lead to the deaths of millions of people across decades. Those two shots, one of them fired into Franz Ferdinand's neck. The other one into the stomach, the pregnant stomach of his wife, Sophie. This is the uniform that Franz Ferdinand was wearing at the time of the event. Gavrilo Princep was arrested on site and he was taken to prison. He was not given the death penalty as he was too young. So he received life imprisonment where he died in prison. This is Franz Ferdinand and his wife on their funeral. So the impact of that event, of those two shots. Naturally, Austria-Hungary were very unhappy that their Archduke was killed. They, they took their anger out on the Serbian government. Remember the terrorists who carried out this event were from Serbia. Now, they delivered an ultimatum to Serbia, saying basically, join our empire or we are going to come and take you by force. Now, remember, Austria-Hungary wanted to bring Serbia into its empire originally. Naturally, the Serbian people did not want to be part of the Austrian empire and they refused. This, as a result, led to Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia on the July 28th, 1914. Now, as we all know, that didn't stop there. Could have just been a war between two countries, but because these countries were allied with other nations, things spiraled out of control and a domino effect led to a massive global conflict. We'll be looking next week at how those alliances led from what could have been a war between two countries into a global conflict. 
So, your task for today. You are going to write your own recount of that assassination event in your own words. I'd like you to include some of the success criteria below. So things like the key names of the assassins, the person assassinated, his wife. Make sure you've got the events in correct chronological order, so don't muddle up the order of events. Make sure you have got the date in which it takes place and the location. The countries involved, so it took place in a particular city, but there were more than one country involved. Key details, such as street names and what happened. And then an evaluation of what happened as a result of those gunshots. If you've got that done relatively quickly, there is an extension that I would like you to have a go at. It's an evaluation of whether you think Gavrilo Princep is to blame for the outbreak of World War I, having a look at both sides of the argument might be beneficial to do a little bit of extra research in order to answer that question. Thank you for watching and next week we'll be looking at alliances.